Warm weather like we've had this fall could be good news for beekeepers. Researchers are hoping to find new ways to reduce winter die-off in honeybee hives. It's just a few beehives on Virginia State University's research farm. You could call it greenhouse bee farming, as Virginia's top beekeeper is hoping that on this site he'll find ways to increase the number of hives that survive till spring. Right now, about a third of all Virginia bee colonies do not make it. Prior to the introduction of, of pests like the trachomite, varroa mite, uh, the small high beetle, some of the diseases have been introduced in the past 15, 20 years. The winter losses were about 10 down to 5%. Um, and that's normal, that's where we want to get it back down to, that 5, 10%, no more than 10% loss. Um, so we've got a ways to go. Um, the bees are not, um, haven't been uh, able to sustain themselves. Uh, beekeepers haven't been able to sustain operations at a 30% greater loss each year. Keith Tigner is Virginia's state apiarist, the point man in helping beekeepers keep their hives healthy. Bee pollination is a central part of Virginia's farm economy and everyone's food supply. But beekeepers have been forced to import hives from other states or even other countries in recent years. Bees are responsible for pollinating most of the nation's fruit and vegetable crops. Tigner is experimenting with insulating hives with different materials to help bees moderate the temperature in their hives. Normally the bees will overwinter in a cluster rather than hibernating or migrating south to warmer temperatures. They'll stay in an area, they'll stay within their nest, their cavity, and cluster together, sharing each other's warmth and serving as insulation, creating a ball of bees. The center of it will be a, a furnace where they generate heat, they in, ingest honey, use that honey for metabolic activities of their, in their body to create some heat, and then in the center of the ball is the, is the queen and any larva pupa that are there. Um, they want to maintain a certain temperature, at least 80 degrees, but once the larva and the eggs are there, 92 degrees Fahrenheit. The outside of the ball will be a thick layer of bees that serve as insulation. So it's much like your house where you're trying to heat the inside and keep it from getting outside. But unfortunately, the efficiency of the cluster is dependent on the number of bees. As we get later in the winter, the bees start to die off um, the cluster gets smaller and smaller and they start to lose contact with the honey. And so if they, if they get into a situation where they're clustered together tightly with loss of the, of the honey for several days, they could literally starve to death. Tigner has temperature sensors set up to allow him to track how warm each hive is over time. Some are wrapped with household insulation, some with foam products, and one with just the tar paper from a roof to boost solar warming. But one of his best prospects so far is a high tunnel. They've been using high tunnels in, in agriculture for a few years now. Honeybees are basically a, play off the same thing. They're temperature sensitive. They, uh, the growth of the colony is based on the, on the warmth of the of temperatures around them. As it gets colder, of course, they shut down um, and cluster together. As it, gets, as it gets warmer, they start producing eggs. The queen starts to lay eggs. Bees start to forage and so forth and so on. So what the high tunnel principle is is that we can can warm up the hive a little faster a little more during the day. Tigner is conducting this research with money from the Virginia Pollinators Fund. That's where he can put grants and donations from beekeepers to help train new beekeepers and find ways to solve their problems. He expects it will be several winters before he has hard numbers to share with other Virginia beekeepers.